Hey, welcome everybody. It's Christina Merkley, and this is the process pop-up. This is number 40. So I started this in, wow, uh, March when the pandemic was sweeping across towards North America, right, as we were at that time in consciousness. So uh, anyway, it's going to continue for the foreseeable future, <laughs> given whatever we're in the midst of is continuing for the foreseeable future. Um, uh, let me just tee things up. Uh, we we're going to, in a second here, s shift into 10 minutes of meditation, which just helps us get here and connect with stillness, presence. Uh, and then uh, this is very spontaneous, so it's different every time. Different people come. Uh, maybe the same people come, but you're in a different kind of uh, place. Different things are unfolding for you. Um, so what we typically do is we'll sit for 10 minutes of meditation. And then uh, I'll ask for any reports, and that'll be for folks who have been here before, if there's anything that they care to report in on, uh, in terms of their inner work and what's unfolding. And then we meet what's arising. So it's a co-created agenda, which means it's just spontaneous. It just emerges every time somehow from who's here and what's present. And then I've got a whole bag of trips, um, trips, that too, tricks, um, from my process toolkit right a lot of them have visual tools because i'm a visual practitioner some of you might be here because of that connection uh, some of them are well all of them are actually visual to some extent or other some of them have templates some of them are just emergent open things i don't know what we'll do because it'll come from you but depending on what emerges uh, there will be a, a right fit or a right match in terms of what process we do uh, we tend to do a variety of things. There's a lot of self-inquiry. Uh, there can be different kinds of visioning work. Might make sense given where we are between uh, the holidays right now and a new year about to descend. So maybe some visioning might appear. Um, there's also different kinds of inner work, inner child work, inner adolescent work, inner adult work uh, called orphan rescue. And uh, constellation, I'm a constellator as well, systemic family constellation. So sometimes what presents itself, there might be a system, right? Different components. And it's always nice as a group to do that together. It gives us all something to do. Uh, so we might find our way to systemic constellations as well. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a, a preamble here. Um, in terms of if, if you need to leave, I know some people are having bandwidth, um, you know, technology programs are, are problems. Um, just go with whatever you need. If you do need to sign off and leave, I do ask that you use the chat function just to say goodbye. Um, that way, you know, sometimes we're doing emotional stuff here. So I just want to make sure people aren't going off in a charged or triggered way, right? So just holding the container to make sure folks are okay. So just if you do a little goodbye, letting me know you're okay, if and when you have to leave, uh, I ask you to do that. Uh, otherwise, I will just check up with you to make sure things are okay. All right, anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, is emergent, so it takes a bit of an act of faith if you're here for your first time. Going once, going twice? Okay. Then we'll start with our 10 minutes of meditation and uh, meet you on the other side of that, and we'll see what spontaneously emerges here today. Thanks. Just going to set my timer here, and I will mute myself so you don't hear my breathing. <laughs> All right.
Okay, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to sit together. Uh, we'll segue now into reports. And uh, for those of you who have been here before, or maybe it's been a while, if there's anything you care to report in on. And then we'll move to what's arising now, which will help us build whatever we're going to do together here. Um, we typically go, it depends, but it's around uh, two hours from our start time. So I'm on Pacific time, so we'll go around noonish. Uh, again, if you need to leave earlier, that's fine. Just use the, the chat. And we can use the chat as we go along as well, too, for reactions and things. Any reports? I can report in. Thanks, Christina. Thank you so much. Such gratitude to you for doing these sessions. It's thank you. Uh, it's hugely um, beneficial. I think every time I come, and I've been busy, uh, so I haven't been coming. I had a a big graphic recording job that was really hard and really fun for the month of November, but I um, also finished my book and it's published. So that was like this huge thing. Congratulations. Was, yeah. Yay. I know I want a copy. Okay. <laughs> we'll sort that out. Yeah, we'll get it sorted out. Um, it, it's, uh, it's a big exposure. It, the book is partly my story. And so there's kind of this little niggly thing going on there. Like how many people do I want to know my story? But I think it's not just my story. It's a story of women living with a chronic illness um, in a developed country and women living with a chronic illness in Africa. So it's just kind of a, a bigger story than just two personal lives, which I think is really important to me. Anyway, and during the meditation today, I was really focused on um, the number of people who died. There's just been a huge number of people in my circle of friends who've, who've passed away in the past year. And I, uh, I'm i okay with that in, on one level because I don't really believe people disappear into a black, um, I don't know, d dark hole. I, I just think that the work that they came here to do is done, their earthly work is done and they have other things to do. Their spirit has other things to do. And so um, that's okay. And then I'm, I'm very, aware of how much people's lives impacted me and th those lives are the ones I'm thinking of, but I think everyone's life impacts another person. And, and I feel quite privileged to have been put in a place where I've had some really remarkable people in my path and, and they've been so uh, humble in their way of dealing with me. And I'm, that was what came to me thicker, thicker than anything during the meditation was, you know, this is, this earth time is a gift and that gift is to be shared. And uh, I really am focusing now on doing the things that I enjoy doing as well as passing things on to other people in a way that allows them to enjoy what they're doing. And it feels like a really good place to be. And at the same time, there's all kinds of craziness going on. I really feel like there's this COVID Omicron lurking around every corner. Like, I, you know, you go out and you look for it. It's, it's <laughs> going to be there somewhere. And it's just kind of craziness. But it is affecting so many people. It's definitely a very um, catchy uh, virus. And so that's um, another thing that's going on. There's just a lot of parts of me that are activated right now, it feels like. And I went swimming in the ocean this morning, so I'm pretty activated anyway. The water was warmer than the air this morning. There's snow here, for those that don't know it. I'm in Victoria, and it's just very strangely snowy. In fact, there's icicles in the building that I that I am in. And I'm You're right down by the water and walk down and go swimming. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, but it's wonderful and very en enlivening. So um, I'm feeling... Yeah, lots of different things right now. Mm -hmm. Peggy, would you like to say any first names to welcome your friends who have passed to Satsang today? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, I'd like to welcome Mort um, to the sat Satsang and, and know that 
um, you've not only impacted my life, but you've impacted many, many people's lives by your creativity. And uh, you're welcome to hear more. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And Tom, um, another creative being who was an incredible photographer, uh, you were uh, able to bring people to life in a way that um, everyone could see the humanity within each of us. And I really am grateful for you. You're for welcome here, Tom. Yeah. yeah. And Derek. Mm, hello, Derek. Yeah. Oh, and Jesse. Mm. <laughs> and Allison. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Allison. You're welcome yeah. here. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful beings. And I know you're doing good work where you are. And I thank you for the time that you spent with me and the, the openness and the generosity that I received from you. There's more, but I think that's enough. Oh, welcome here in our sot song. Thank, thank you. you, Peggy. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. I see you just popped in. You're welcome here too. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've just done 10 minutes of meditation and now we're just um, spontaneous reports and just seeing what's present here and we'll find our, our way to, you know, a co-created agenda. Peggy started us off. Any other reports? Reports. Yep, how you been since last time you were here and anything you want to report on your consciousness edge? Go for it, LB. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add my dad, uh, Ron, to that list of people mm -hmm. who passed this year. And um, I also wanted to just acknowledge that it's been like 15 months since I've had this <laughs> Look at those legs. Wow. <laughs> they go forever. Um, and just we have worked so many hours um, every day of our life together to create and be a team. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. And um, I'm just really seeing that like work paying off and seeing our relationship and how it's a relationship of choice rather than I told you, so do it. Um, which is what I really wanted with this this dog in my life. So that's just been really wonderful and really stabilizing. Um, and then I have on my mind something about um, this significant, like, ocean size um, surrender. Mm. And it came about through a routine eye exam. And... Um, I've been told I am going blind and I'm partially blind in this eye. So it just came out of like nowhere. Mm -hmm. And rather than be like my father or some of the older people in my life now who have like a list of things wrong, and it's just like I've been watching over the last two years, the list grow. And it's just like, I don't want to repeat the list. I don't want to live by a list. I want to yes, this too, yes to this too, yes, this too and really live that as this is, this is it. This is what I've got. And this is um, like letting go of even the anger and the frustration from the carjacking and all that still is like still pieces of that floating around. So I just feel like this huge longing for surrender. I also feel it's really hard to do visioning work right now and um, ooh, metaphorically and physically. Literally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and it's all new. It's just like I don't have it confirmed. They don't know if it's just an anatomical blindness or if it's actually the glaucoma. And um, I don't have an eye that's operable, op eyes that are operable because of the uh, way my optic nerve comes in. So there's like the cataracts are going to have to stay, the glaucoma is going to have to stay, everything's just going to go. And you can read about it and you can see like five to 10 years you have a vision and I asked the doctor, should I be training this dog for guide dog work? And she said, well, it's a little early because her career will be over when you really need it. And their careers are five years. And so it's kind of like indis 
indirectly she's saying you have five years of sighted to get it you know to get to the point where you won't be sighted and she said you'll just start noticing you knock things over and like i've been breaking things and knocking things over for the last year and a half and not able to read and i just didn't understand it i thought it was stress mm-hmm. so and there's no there's also no um, explanation for why now like every single eye exam has always had a normal eye pressure and i've always had my field and so there's no like they said the only thing is if i had trauma to the eye if i had been impacted by the eye and i didn't have trauma to the eye so i'm just like accepting and trying to see like what would it really be like to really really surrender so that's my report Thanks, Elby. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, have you on our list here to help you meet the longing for surrender. This is Belinda. I'll go ahead and go next. Thanks. Um, this is my first time participating and trying to find the time to participate. So thank you and um, good morning to each of you this morning. Um, I too uh, want to add my mom to the to the list as well. What's your mom's first name, if you're okay saying it? Yes, her name is Irene. Um, she lived a long life, and so, but I'm st- it's still pretty fresh mm-hmm. for me. Irene, you are welcome here with her sot song. Yay! And I think you know, for me, one of the things that I um, is interesting. I spent a little bit of time this morning listening to Bruce Lipton about medicine and how we look at um, healing. And um, it, it's really interesting how the, the medicine in the medical world, the, the paradigm that we are all so used to is so different than what's coming about and really looking at quantum physics and how we can look at our own inner healing and our own stories um, as they unfold. And um, congratulations to um, Peggy to writing her book. In fact, that's what I've been kind of wrestling with and, and really trying to look for that opportunity to share my own personal story of my own inner healing, but also um, how is it that I can share my story so that it's um, a part of um, humanity's healing as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really what this time is about is really having us go within our own being and finding those that divinity within ourselves <clears throat> to share outwardly to to humanity um, because we all come from the same place um you know in our humanness and yes. so that's kind of where i'm at right now and just kind of sitting with that and how can i recreate and as we are all creators of our own divinity um, to expand that out really. And so that's kind of what's resonating with me at this moment. So thank you to each and every one of you. And thank you, Christina. Mm-hmm. Very welcome. Thank you. And Divinity, you are welcome here. <laughs> and the synchronicity of two authors in our midst. Cool. Wow. Sharon, it looks like yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lovely to be here. It's been a long time for me. I, I mean to be here often and then life gets in the way. So I, I appreciated that I could come a little late today. <laughs> Thank you for that. You're very welcome. Um, what's going on for me? Like, I mean, pandemic wise, I feel like I'm in a bardo and I've, I've done some training with, um, um, oh my God. I've got a memory thing going on, let me tell you, Pema children, (laughs) and and learned a lot about the bardo beyond just when we pass, but the the bardo in everyday life. And so that gap, like I'm in between, really, I'm, you know, 77 and a half, and this has been an interesting time for me as well as everybody. And so I'm not sure what's next, but what I really wanted some help processing with the group today is I have a niece who I live in a co-op I'm in Vancouver and I have a a niece who lives in this building as well with with her husband and her now son non-binary Charlie who I adore she's he is 16 I'm trying to get my protein proteins my pronouns right Mm -hmm. anyway Jennifer mom 
has been chronically ill for oh, several years, at least 10 years. And, and her, her, what she's sick with gets more complicated all the time. She's in and out of the hospital. And, and she's a complex person. You know, she, uh, she medicates herself with, um, you know, various things as well as being on a lot of medications. And so she's reaching the end of her tolerance for this life. And so she's been investigating um, assisted dying. Mm -hmm. So my brother is her dad and I'm from a big family. So she has several aunts and, and, and uncles and she's estranged from her own mother. So I've basically been her, her, her mom in many ways. And I share that with my sister, Susan. So as Jen has reached this point, she's talking about it a lot and she's wanting to plan it because her last day in hospital was horrible. It wasn't that long ago, just before Christmas. So she wanted to try and be able to, to get through Charlie's school year, so till June, but she's now feeling like that won't work for her. So in her planning, of course, Jeff and, and Charlie don't want her to do it down at their place. That would be too traumatic for them. So I've offered my place. I live alone. I've got a two bedroom apartment. And, and I find myself getting teary now, but I haven't been. I've just been very matter of fact with Jen that, you know, I totally support her in doing this. And yes, I can accommodate this. I don't think that's hard for me to accommodate. And, you know, who she wants can be here in the living room. She can be in a bedroom and she can have whoever she wants in the bedroom with her. And I'm, I'm imagining that we'll all take time to have some closure with her. So I don't know when this will happen, but she's starting to phone everybody and talk about it. And uh, I know my brother's very... He's not happy about this. He doesn't want her to do this. And so one of the things I haven't done is I'm very close to him, Steve. And so I'm, I'm feeling like I need to, to have a conversation with him to make sure he's okay with me in the role I'm, I'm offering her. So I'm very surprised that I'm teary today because I haven't been. I've been sort of stoic with Jim. Here's your it, welcome here. And we yeah. can likely hold space for inquiry for you, Sharon. Yeah. You. See what unfolds as you meet each of it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Powerful gathering, huh? Yeah. Mm hmm And two authors. Wow. <laughs> I'm curious it's about Very that. powerful stories, too, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes, I know Peggy, so I can feel it in Belinda's. Yeah. It's not necessary, but if anybody else wants to, uh, uh, if there's a report or just let me know if there's anything that's arising, what's happening in the reports is we're showing what's arising, too. So I'm getting a sense of where we'll go today. And you can just say hello, too, if you care to. I'll say hello. Um, I'm Terry. Oh, I'm Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. I um, am certified in the expressive arts, and I've also done some graphic presentation work. Um, and what I'm kind of... Uh, doing now is I'm really wanting to know how I can share my gifts best and where that is going to emerge or bring me um, it, in a different path or how it's going to benefit everybody that I'm supporting and working with. And um, that's really what I'm trying to find right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's some visioning. Great. I can feel future self with you, Terry. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. 
Denise, I've got you muted, so I'm going to unmute on this end in case you, there's anything you want to report in on. Not necessary. I know you're traveling, but just want to make the technology work if it's there. Okay. Claire, anything you want to say hello? Sometimes it's nice just to see people if you just want to say a quick hello because we're going to go into some deep processing here in a second. Maybe you've stepped away. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, as this, let me just check my chat too because I don't have chat up. Okay. Comment there about the writing. Excellent. Uh, as things unfold, I get a sense of um, what's present and then where uh, to begin. So, uh, Lisa, yourself, uh, Sharon and Terry, I'm hearing in particular, um, often what happens is parallel processing too, right? There's piggybacking and things that happen as we start to work with people. Um, probably uh, my sense is uh, there's going to be at least two inquiries. So we're going to start with self-inquiry. And um, we're all kind of holding space, right? As I work with somebody with inquiry. Um, yes, it can be personal, but as has been alluded to from our authors, there's also collective, right? There's humanity as I work with each person. Um, uh, my understanding of this work, and I'm being taught every time I uh, hold space for a person, is we're interacting with consciousness, um, big C consciousness at the individual level, and again, at the bigger kind of level of things, right? So things can operate at different, different layers and levels here. So whatever happens, just kind of, um, you're holding space if you're not, uh, if I'm not directly working with you. When, I, when um, we do inquiry, I'll be offering different things to the person and they'll be applying them within themselves and something will happen and they will be reporting on, on what naturally unfolds for them. You may find as you're observing this too, something happens for you, right? You go along in your own kind of journey. There might be parallel processing happening. So you can um, use the chat function if there's things going on that you want to express or at the end, if there's anything you want to say to that particular person about the piece of work that they did. Um, we don't do a lot of cross share in between because that allows me to go to the next person and just kind of work with as many people as we can during the time. But I will stick around afterwards if there's any, um, you know, debriefing, we'll do a close out, things like that. So we'll, we'll find our way there. Just thinking and feeling in to see if there's anything else I want to say for those who might be new for inquiry work. Nope. We'll see. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to take them in the order that they came. So, Peggy, there's probably some work I could do with you, but I'm just feeling Lisa as a start. So I'm going to start with... Uh, Sorry, LB. And then I'll probably progress to Sharon, but we'll just see what unfolds from here. Is that all right with you, LB? Absolutely. Okay. Now I'm going to screen share. So I, um, and some of, you know, a lot of you who are attracted here are visual practitioners as well, right? So I started as a graphic recorder 25 something years ago, and uh, I moved into facilitation with the work. And then I've been a real pioneer in the niche of applying this with individuals. I've got a whole, some of you are certified visual coaches, so you know, I've got a whole visual coach certification. Some of you might be considering that. This, um, what we're doing with inquiry is just the leading edge of my work. So it's naturally unfolded. I had a Kundalini awakening along the way. So it's naturally unfolded into this um, uh, energetic and consciousness work, right? So we're really on the, the leading edge here for me with my work. And I think for those of you who are interested in the visual application of things, right? This is obviously the leading edge of more of the right brain side of our profession. So I'm with that. I have a big, large drawing tablet here. I use a Wacom Cintiq. And so I'm going to bring that up. And the program I'm using, I use Sketchbook Pro because I'm working with Cintiq. There's only certain programs you can use, same as if you're on an iPad. Some of you would probably be using Procreate. So that's my technology and software. People often have questions about that. I've got a whole kit that you can 
go to if you're interested in developing the same stuff for yourself is called Shift into Digital Work. You can find it on my website under the kits. Okay, are you seeing the board, Lisa? Did I screen share okay? Yes, I see yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, now you, this is not your first rodeo in terms of this kind of inquiry work. What, um, what color do you want for your base? Oh, fuchsia. Okay, I'll do my purple. best here. Oh, you want purple, not a, not a hot pink, a purple? I, yeah. I kind of like a in between. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find it. I don't know if you can see the band there, but that's more pink. What's going on here? Oh, well, that's why. That looks good. How's that for you? Is that okay? That's great. Okay. Boom. <laughs> Dramatic. What do you want for your writing color on top? Um, yellow. Okay. Come on. I'm trying to move my layer and it's not cooperating. Then I'll just build another one. There we go. Okay, let me go grab the yellow. Okay, thanks with the technology. So now I'm um, just taking a breath and just um, meeting whatever's most present now. I'm just gonna draw a little bubble because you did a check-in, right? And you had a lot in your check-in. So I'm not gonna try to replicate all of that, but I'll just put the little check-in bubble here. And we're just doing a little nod to the narrative and, and the story that you told us at the start of things, right? And just a welcome, right? So to, to everything that you brought there, and then maybe let's even draw eyes right, because this is involving your beautiful eyes. Hello, eyes, you are welcome here. And there's probably, um, we knew that in there, there's stuff going on with the eyes. There's probably a lot of no, <laughs> even though you're wanting surrender, right? So yes, please, to surrender. And if there is any understandable aversion to, to what's going on, if this is happening to me, if it was my dream, I'd sure have aversion. So we're just going to welcome any of that natural aversion, right? Any of the no thank you. Um, so there's probably a mix of, of feelings here. Desire for that surrender and using this as a growth for your soul. And then a no to, these are your physical eyes you're talking about. And to a, a slow, uh, degeneration of that eventually leading to blindness at least at this point in time that's what you think you're encountering so just welcoming all that and then just seeing what happens for you lb as we start to meet the things that you've brought forward here um when you said the no it was interesting because at some level i've known this for a long time like when I was in college I went to the Institute for the Blind and picked up a typewriter and started learning how to type braille and then the next year I had a blind roommate um, and so it's almost like I've already imagined I was losing my sight so I don't think the no is so big right now it's the more um, let's meet that though that's significant in and of okay. itself right so as, as we met all that, what popped out was these memories, right? So the, the I'll probably spell Braille wrong, forgive me, but um, Braille and that um, having that roommate. Who I've been working closely with the last two years. Wow, yeah. So it's really been in your field, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so just agreeing with that wow, you're right. I have connections with this. What do you know? As you look back over your life, con your consciousness just flashed you these memories. And then just see what unfolds as you just kind of say yes and agree with those memories. Um, there's been this um, try wanting to be a part of the guide dogs. They're they're here in San Rafael, like 40 minutes from me, mm. um, but like not getting hired when I applied years ago for the position, it just keeps opening and opening and opening and opening. 
and it's kind of like a house mom position, like hosting the folks who come to pick up their dog for two weeks and they're meeting their dog for the first time and learning to work with them. Um, and so there's this now feeling like, okay, um, what do I do? I have a limited amount of time to use what, everything I know with my site to trans, trans, what do you call that? When you move on? Transmute or transform or, or I don't know. To move, I don't know, to, um, to, to shift over to doing what I do and know and who I am without sight. Um, okay, slow down a bit because you're meeting a lot, right? So first off, let's meet, meet the guide dogs, right? So this has also been in your life. In a way, this is another one of these memories and consciousness is pointing to things. What do you know? You've had an interest and fascination with guide dogs and went so far as to try to be part of that program and, and got into doing the host work, if I'm understanding you right. Is that correct? Mm, no, wanted no. that position but didn't get it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so meeting that then wanted the host position and then didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Getting it now maybe in a different way. Okay. Um, and it's just interesting. I'm just throwing these things out. Christina, there's like this super longing to be a part of a community, but not having really f connected with who that community is. Um, yes, I have community where I live, um, but it's not like really feeling and seeing each other community. It's just uh, more superficial and everybody's got their lives. And, and sometimes I think of this woman who was my roommate, Linda, um, and the work I've done with her, she listens at such a deep level. Um, it's her, her hearing and listening makes up for what she doesn't see. And so I just wonder, like, is this an option, a possibility opening up um, to really deeply connect with people in a way I've been longing for? And how do I use this? to be situated there and rather than like need these services, like assist in these services as well as need them probably. So, th so let's also welcome minds showing up here, right? So we're welcoming the mind and the intellect that's tracking this and that's trying to put together pieces like, wow, isn't that interesting? this is connected to community. Um, I appreciate how uh, the blind, as you've been working with Linda, you're just appreciating the listening, right? You definitely are very, as long as I've known you, listening at a deep level, right? In lots of different ways, inquiry included, visual coaching included. So listening at a deep level, yes, please, to that. And then the mind is also going, hey, do we need to make this um, a, a need? Like, I'm going to need this, or can I just assist in this, right? So just mm -hmm. first off, welcoming the mind and the intellect, right? Because it's always a mm -hmm. ally of ours, even if it gets a little carried away with its one way of being. So thank you for your love to the mind, because it's trying to figure this out and understand it and come at it from a logical kind of intellectual point of view. So much appreciation. And you're right, you're right. It's trying to figure this out. This is the big question, right? Do you, are you gonna need this literally? You'll be a blind person or will you just be assisting blind people or something going on with sight? Mm -hmm. And um, you can ask the question too. Um, ask, is it necessary? Is it necessary that you be blind? I'm saying that in terms of asking as you're interacting with consciousness, is it necessary? We'll just see what happens.
Um, I just feel a big tiredness when I when I hear you say that. Is it necessary? Let's meet the tiredness and agree with it. Hello, tiredness. You are welcome here. You're right. You're right. We don't like it. And it's interesting. This might be more mine, but it's just like, there's so many things I don't like what I'm seeing right now. And the homelessness and the drugs outside my window and just painful, painful stuff. Um, so it, here I am saying, I don't, I don't like what I see. It's like, oh, okay, here. You don't need to see it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. is that, is yeah. that? Right. So just mm -hmm. agree with that. Uh, with the homelessness and the drugs and everything that you're seeing, just take a moment to agree, right? That, that uh, of course, we don't like that. Of course, the heart hurts. And then the mind did its thing, understandably, to go, hmm, is that our way of not seeing it? Because it hurts so much to see it. But just agreeing, no, no thanks, you're right, we don't like it. And it's probably those things, you know, it's a, those are big issues. So when, when, when each of us sees those things, it's not unusual for us to feel powerlessness when we encounter really, really challenging, big, complex things going on. Anything you're noticing is you're just agreeing with it. You're right, you're right, we don't like it. Makes us tired, makes us wanna shut our eyes. Um, just the, uh, the, I'm aware of the overwhelm that I've just been feeling with like, yeah. stuff and have been just been trying to like get my life down to six boxes again so that it would be easy to pick up and relocate and be where we're gonna be for the next part of our life if it's not here so just meeting the overwhelm boy and the 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 preparedness right to try to get try to simplify and get things down to six boxes mm -hmm. and i'm gonna guess i feel it in my own body just you know anxiety and fear and mm -hmm. not knowing right it's so hard not to know and the, the desire to prepare for the knowing by getting this stuff all organized. So just mm -hmm. also do a come, come here. This is probably some morphins, right? And that's the shorthand word, but you might have another phrase that works better for you, right? But just, oh, like come here, right? All the ones that have been overwhelmed and that probably are getting rattled with the boxes and the simplicity kind of stuff and the trying to prepare just from your big mama divine mother energy, just hug them, you know, bring them close. Come here, sweeties, come here. You're safe, you're safe, I'm here, we're here. I, I'm almost afraid to say this, but it's almost like a relief to like remove something from this overwhelm and it's just like, um, it doesn't have to be my eyes, but something has to give, kind of. So in a way, the eye is kind of being the things to give, eh? Okay. So just meeting the something has to give. So the when, mm -hmm. when we have that overwhelm, something has to give. Just meeting that understandable human reaction. And just, um, this is kind of like an, is it necessary, right? It's, um, her name just went out of Byron Katie's, is it true? So just, is it necessary? Is it true? Ask it, something has to give. Does it have to give, does it have to be the eyes? Uh, 
um, I don't have an answer for that, but I, I, I can't read what you're writing because I'm like, I'm on a phone and it's really tiny. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just seeing it, just like seeing the contrast in the color and how simple it is um, and the little dash dotted lines. Um, when I think about just something has to give, it's just like, um, it's actually happening right now. Like in in identifying and talking about this. Great. So so good. I'm doing it right now. Just agree with that. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm giving by meeting this, and that's mm -hmm. how I'm giving. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Just brilliant. Yes, please. You're right. And there's this um, kind of new, not not so familiar feeling like um, there's no end or there's no outcome that's um, coming from this, that that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. And so even though I, I have been a part of process work and I know at some level that I'm actually um, actually living that right now. Okay. And that sometimes like just a question is enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep you inquiring with that inquiry question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That might be a place to leave it. Just see if there's anything mm -hmm. else wants to come and, and um, is there any, just, um, even even inviting that to liberate more to take up more space this other stuff has been taking up a lot of space right so whatever's going with that question and that lightning or whatever it is that happens with that question just inviting it like Psst, you can take up more space you know <laughs> i like that yeah your consciousness yeah. Right, might have forgotten. Yeah. So just see yeah. as you remind it, right? Like, hey, you can stretch. Would you like to take up more space? I can expand like Tuli's legs. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Good idea. Yes, please expand like Tuli's beautiful long legs. They're, they're like these yeah. extension legs. When she wants to get on a table, she just extends her legs. <laughs> That's a beautiful metaphor. Yes. <laughs> just say yes, please, to that. Absolutely, you have it right. You have permission to expand like Thule's beautiful extension legs. Good idea. See what happens as you tell it, yes, yes, just like that. <laughs> A lot more humor in there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Very welcome. And just inviting that to continue to unfold, right? The stretching out and extending. Yes, please. Mm, thank you so much. Thank you yeah. all for also holding space yes. for me. Yeah. Um, uh, C might be mine who does it, or it might be uh, Tuli's legs. What's an appropriate title? Mm. It's not coming right now. No, I'm there's... open to suggestions. <laughs> LB's inquiry. <laughs> um, How about stretch like Tuli's legs? Expand like Tuli's legs. Very like good. That. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Now, I might not have spelt it right. T-U-L-L-E? -T nope, just T-U-L-E. She's named after our Tuli elk. Not familiar. Okay, beautiful. I've got it. Expand like Tuli's legs. Yes, please. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give this a quick save. If anybody has any uh, comments, anything you want to say direct to, to LB, you can put them in the chat for her. And then there's, if there's anything you want to say that if there's any like dovetailing or piggybacking or any ahas from, for you, for your own, uh, you know, inner workings, uh, feel free to unmute. 
and, and anything you want to share or piggyback off of what you saw happen with her work. And then we'll move, we'll move next to Sharon. This is Belinda. Um, LB, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Um, you know, as I was listening to you and as Christina was going through this process, <clears throat> you know, we are all bombarded with a lot of things that are happening externally to us. And it just re, uh, reminded me is, you know, there are a lot of things that we don't want to look at. Um, but part of that inner healing journey that we have to go through is having us to re come back into our own personal being and come to resolution with the way that we see things. Um, and so this kind of reflected that back to me. And so thank you for sharing that experience um, with me because it helped me to see myself in, in that process. Beautiful. Thanks, Belinda. Yeah. LB, is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Um, I was so struck right from the beginning of, of your story, how spirit has been guiding and preparing you, you know, with, with your finding your way to your curiosity around um, learning Braille and, and just many things that would support you if this is indeed your journey. I, I was very struck by that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. I can't find the chat, but I did it like that. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> that works. <laughs> it took me a second to find it, too. <laughs> Good. Anybody else go almost going twice? Hi, I'll be. I just speak to what I thought about um, really resonated to me that you had so many interconnections and the, the, the simplicity of that and the fact that you have that search for a community and that we all are interconnected. Everything is interconnected. And um, I think that, that that really struck me. So mm. thank you so much for sharing. Thanks, Terry. Okay, just getting my map ready here. Okay, I'm going to move right along to Sharon. And I saw the note in there from you, Claire, so good to hear that. Happy birthday and all the best with your healing. Okay, I'm just doing a couple of things on my end so I can see you guys. Sharon, you should be seeing a big white sheet of paper, digital paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. right. <laughs> Get my controls up here. I'm going to ask you the same question. Pick a color, any color. What do you want? Is your backdrop color? Blue. Okay. I can do that. Dark blue, light blue. Kind of a turquoisey blue if there is one. Okay. Yeah, I've got this one. We'll see. That's fine. That's good. Okay. And what would you like for your writing color on top? Um, I really want some kind of a, a, a fuchsia or purple. Okay. It'll show up. Yeah, I'll do kind of a violet. Okay, good. Is that That's all right? Good. That'll work? Okay, good. Okay, so same thing, because you had a check-in too. I'm going to start there, right? Because we got the narrative yeah. versus your story. And we, we know there's certain people involved. And we know there's uh, intense situation. Uh, intense would be my word, but you might have another word. And so we're just going to welcome all of that. You're welcome here. Welcome it to Satsang here all those people and all that whole situation, the various things and those tears that started to come that maybe weren't there before because you were more in that mind doer practical. And a let's welcome that right off the bat too, right? We'll, we'll welcome the mind, the mind, the intellect. That's also the doer. And it's love. Thank it for its love because those are wonderful skills to have. It's a good thing all of us have them. And there's another side, so we're just going to welcome those tears. 
Hello, tears. You're welcome here. And then just see what's most present now. Hmm. Um. <laughs> it. What's most present right at this moment is what a brat Jen is. You okay. know. I yeah. love her being set the brat, but it is challenging. Okay, so welcome that. Yeah, I welcome that. I do. That feeling of, oh, here she is again. What a brat. Yeah, her spirit is strong. Strong spirit. Okay. Yes. Just see what help ha what happens as you meet that a little bit of um, frustration, maybe a little judgment. If it was my dream, that's what it'd be about. I might not have it right, but um, and then also just this kind of appreciation of her strength, right? Like of that uh, of that brattiness, of that kind of uh, yeah. showing up. Yeah, it it reminds me of she had a very toxic mother and. This is how she survived uh, with that much. Okay, so the survival yeah. abilities or adaptation and gifts. Hello, yeah. hello to survival. Yes, please. That childhood survival stuff yeah. and her toxic mom that that came from. I'm also amazed by She's, she's been intubated and in six month comas three times, maybe. I, I'm just amazed at her strength for pulling through. Like, like she survives many times when they didn't think she would. Mm -hmm. So deep out of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then what happens? I go to Charlie. Mm -hmm. Hello, Charlie. You're welcome Hello, here. Hello, Charlie. A, a, a little memory, recent memory with Charlie. She, he asked if I would help her with a, a project, which was writing a resume for one of her classes. And she hasn't had a job yet, so... Um, pulling out her skills and I loved how she could build on I mean she saved her mother several times by being the one who recognizes um, when Jan's brittle diabetes is, is putting her close to a coma she's the one who recognizes it's time to call for an ambulance and and can help her mother take more accountability around keeping herself safe so she is amazing because she stays so strong in crisis. At what cost, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Well, just a deep bow to all of that first. The cost is a question mark, but just really honoring and a deep bow of respect to her abilities, right? Her skills. Yeah knowing when to call and accountability and just um, st strong assistance. Yeah. And then also go with the, this is probably the heart a little bit, right? So as the surrogate uh, grandmother in this case, just wondering about the costs, right? The orders of love out of whack here with a child having to look after a mother at such a young age and the concern around that. So just welcoming your heart and your concern and you're wondering about the cost. I welcome that. Yeah, you're welcome here too, as much as you honor her gifts and her abilities to rise to that occasion at such a young age. Also the ramifications of that. Yeah. Yeah, so what's coming up for me now is moving into 
my process around, you know, really being in, in that meditative state, kind of a Buddhist state, not that I'm a Buddhist by any means, but just of being able to just accept and, and be there with Jennifer in this process and not hold, not make it about me. Just, this makes sense to me. I, I have a strong belief that life continues beyond and helping her see that as she is frightened and wanting her grandmother to be there, my mom. And so I want to feel okay about, get to that place where I'm not worried about others in the family, thinking I'm not feeling this in the way they suspect I should feel it. Um, so is that um, judgment from them? It's protection from them. They're very, very protective of me and my relationship to this family and how involved I've been over the years. Okay. Okay, so meeting all that, your process and the different uh, labels and words put on it, right? And the feelings underneath that, that Buddhaness and that meditative st stuff, or state, sorry. And then the life continues beyond, right? The beliefs yeah, and the knowing, right? And hello, let's welcome your mom, right? Your mom's just arrived here in Satsang from the other side. And then the, the your family, this protection, uh, yeah, my from three the, sisters, especially. Sorry, what especially? My three sisters. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're so tender towards me. Hello, tenderness. You are welcome here. Yes, please. Deep bow and appreciation for tenderness and the sisters. Yeah, so, so I feel like this is me at a feeling state and this is wonderful to see this up there but i feel like the work for me now is to prepare myself to help prepare jennifer for meeting her end meeting that transition point and and being supporting her in a way that you know from what i've learned in doing the work i've done with with Pema children how I can bring that into play. So we're just going to invite this one to liberate. Oops, let me get Carla, somebody popping in here one second. I can get my mouse over here. Okay. So, um, just like Tully's legs, just inviting this preparation of needing to bring it into play, right? To be able to respond and meet the situation and just welcoming that and just do a little to it. Hey, would you like to take up more space? Just see what happens as you present the invitation. It, it, has, its, it has its own wisdom. So you'll see, it'll know how it wants to if it does. It helps me feel unstuck. Uh huh. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. I mean, that's part of me saying that I felt like I'm in a bardo, I'm, I'm in a gap, and I'm not, I'm letting things go that usually feed me, like we, etc. And so this feels an opening. Okay, so opening, you are welcome here. Yes, please. And also finding my way to help that may support me in my preparation. So in there, it's telling you too, there's support not just for others, but support for self. Right. Yes, please. Good idea. Consciousness is pointing that out to you. Yeah, I I can breathe deeper. People have some 
times missing here. Let's get Ross in here too. We're having some other people poke in. Welcome, welcome as you're coming in. We're just mid process, so hang tight. And um, uh, Sharon, just inviting that support for self. Same thing with it. You're welcome to take up more space, right? It's probably been a little contracted or it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, taken up space in a certain way. So you're waking it up too. And you're, you're saying, uh, yes, please liberate, right? Expand. You're presenting that proposition to it. So just see how it responds to the proposition to take up more space. It's okay. It can stretch out. Yeah. And, and knowing that that is in my family, one of my core issues to take up space for myself. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, mine just kicked in to go, whoa, that's yeah. not something we do easily. So we're just appreciating mine. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's, like, that's conditioning. That's habitual family stuff. And it's like, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We can do it different. It's allowed. Yeah. Bit of Hallelujah. a sigh there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hallelujah. Good. <laughs> And Christina, I have to say that I am feeling complete in this growth. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yep. So very welcome. Thank you all for holding space for me. Just one sec. I'm going to do a quick while it's fresh. So we can see the path. Um, uh, what would you like as your title? You've got this. Mm. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Sweet. Again, I'll just prompt people if there's anything you want to say direct uh, to Sharon, you can use the chat function. And then uh, I'll also invite you if there's parallel processing going on, if there's any um, connections to her work that link to your own consciousness edge, by all means, uh, unmute and anything you want to recognize. And then we'll go next to some future self work with Terry. And hello to uh, Carla and Ross, who just dropped in. If you want to flash yourself so we can see, we're doing some deep process work. So it's nice to see the people behind. Hello, Carla. Nice to meet you and see you. Ross, you. Same, thing, same thing for you. Sorry to be late. It's okay. There is no late. Yeah. Ross, uh, I don't know if you can hear me, but if you could unmute and just say hello and or flash your screen. Otherwise, I'll have to ask you to leave. Hello there. Hi, Hi. perfect, yay. Hi there. Um, I'm uh, uh, tuning in a little late. It's early in um, South Australia at the moment, but good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, good morning on tomorrow. Nice to have yeah, you here. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> Yeah, we've just completed two inquiries. So we've done some uh, work with LB and some work uh, as well now with Sharon. And now we're going to make a segue to working with Terry. Okay. Great. Okay. Welcome. Thanks. Nice to hear your voice. Have you attending from so far away? Okay. Uh, uh, any other uh, sharings? Any connections do you want to say from that piece of work before we move on i just wanted to <clears throat> share with shannon um thank you for sharing your experience with us um i just wanted to touch on a, a little point about transition um and helping to be there and be present in that moment because in my ex personal experience with my mother you know i was staying with her all the time and getting to know and be with her. And I think the gift that I received was just the gift of compassion, but also the gift of patience. And those are going to be your two allies that can really help you to 
to be there. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Put on the coffee table, pick up what you like. Yep. Thank you, Belinda. And I'll just see if there's any other sharings. I'm just getting the template ready for the work I'll do here in a sec with Terry. Okay, I'm just gonna share screen. This is, uh, we've been working spontaneously with the process work uh, with inquiry, right? I, that's emergent work that I just used the blank paper, so to speak. So now I'm actually gonna go to a constructed template because my sense is what's gonna be helpful with Terry is doing some future self work. And uh, I think there was, Claire was saying, you were interested in doing some piggybacking and parallel processing. This will also be helpful for other people as well. So all of us can take a journey to go meet our future self while Terry does. So we can get some joint parallel processing happening here. I'm just gonna bring up the template. There we go. And I'll just explain the template real quick and then we'll go do it. And this is one of the tools that are in my uh, visual coach certification. This is also in Shift It. There's a Shift It coming up, everybody, a Shift It retreat, um, January 21 through 23, where we use the core system. I have about 40 something maps and the core system has 17 of them. This is right in the heart of the process, the vision, one of the visioning tools. So uh, in a second here, we're, we're gonna travel to a future self of yours and we're gonna pick one that's a best case scenario. We're gonna go to a positive dimension here um, and we'll find out where she resides out there in time and space. And all of you can do this as well. So I would just invite you, I'm gonna ask Terry here, which one makes sense for her to go to, but each of you may want to check in with your own intuition. If you had this opportunity to connect with a future version of yourself, how far out in quote unquote time would you go? There's short term visions. So that would be, um, you know, a couple of weeks or months, anywhere up to a year. Some, sometimes we're in times in life where it's, makes sense to just do a shorter term trip. Uh, medium term would be beyond that year. So moving into two, three, four, five years, somewhere in that zone would be like a medium stretch for vision. And then um, you could do long term. So that's anything beyond that five years. So in the eight or 10 or 12 or 15, some people go 20, 25. Some people too um, wanna cross the veil. We've had a lot of uh, people who have crossed the veil showing up here in our container. So I just wanna also, that that's an opportunity, right? Is to travel to yourself beyond the veil. Great wisdom there. So Terry, everybody, if you care to play along, each of you can, as I laid out those options, there might be one that kind of lands for you. So take note, everybody, which one lands for you. It's nice to come up uh, with a year and a month if you still are here on the earth plane that you're gonna go travel. Terry, what comes up for you? Um, how about we do like a medium? Okay. Yeah. How many years so out then? Maybe We'll, we'll do five, I think. Okay, yeah. great. So we're at the tail end of 2021 right now. Mm -hmm. And so if we stuck a five on that, that would take us to six or seven, right? Yeah. 2026, 2027. Do you mm -hmm. want to do it kind of the same thing, like kind of the holiday period of that time frame? Sure, yeah. Okay, so this would be the holidays of uh, 2026, just the end of that year. Okay. Um, have you ever done any kind of uh, guided imagery kind of work? Is that new to you or something that you're familiar with? Um, I'm familiar with kind of all of it, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Great. Okay, good. Um, and any of you who are along for the trip, um, 
it's a it's an imagination exercise quote unquote imagination gets a short shift in our physical world right it's actually so powerful yeah uh, so if you think you're making it up you are right so just allow as you go along maybe for your own parallel trip um whatever comes to your consciousness just go with it right just kind of play with it and it kiss the mind a little bit the cognitive left brain logical mind right it sometimes can get a little confused with this kind of work because we're going into right brain territory so just like oh hang in there we're gonna go take a trip and then you'll come back to the left brain mind later on Okay, so you're going to go to 2026. We need something that brings you forward in time. Do you have any favorite time traveling things? <laughs> it might be something organic. It might be something uh, uh, mechanical. I don't know. What's your favorite time travel device oh. or being? Um, I don't know. We're just gonna we're just gonna make it up um, through water. So okay, cool. Yeah. And then the flow through water. Uh-huh. Excellent. I love it. Okay, good. So a little river rafting or something there. Okay. So um, each of you, uh, if you want to play along, now that you have a destination in time or beyond time, um, figure out what your traveling device is, right? It might, again, it might be something organic, like examples. Um, this is a great one with water, uh, bubbles, rainbows, um, horses, eagles, different kinds of uh, animals, um, plants. It can also be, um, if you go into more of the mechanical kind of territory, like back to the future car, or, uh, Doctor Who's travel machines, the TARDIS, right? All sorts of things. So just go Star Trek, the transformer or whatever they're called. <laughs> uh, so just letting whatever flashes for you and just like Terry is going to jump here into the water and time is going to flow forward and bring her to the time and place of her future self. Allow whatever you're interacting with is your travel device. Just kind of consciousness wise connect with it and allow it to pull you forward into the future. So Terry, um, here you are uh, in the holidays of 2021. So somehow this subtle energy water stream somehow shows up in your now world so just find yourself maybe it's your physical energy or sorry your subtle energy self just kind of jumping into that stream and i don't know for myself i can kind of feel like tubing and river rafting right you just kind of mm -hmm. relax into the stream and it's nice and warm and it just takes you forward and just allow yourself to just drop back into that current and that current just be able to take you gently and softly and it's like a magical current that moves you across time and it moves you beyond uh the now of 2021 and it brings you into somehow it brings you into 2022 and then moves you through those seasons of that year and it moves you through into 2023 and all those seasons gently and softly and then into 2024 and the same thing happens with that year and it moves you through that and into the crosses the time barrier into the 2025 and this magical stream just keeps on going and it's going to deposit you and your future self knows you're coming she's on the the bank here ready to greet you as you float your way right to her and as you come into the time and place of 2026 what do you know there's that future self beckoning there on the shore, signaling, come here, come here. And you can close your eyes or open your eyes. Don't worry, I've got the map here. So it'll be here. If you do end up closing your eyes, it'll be there in all its glory or not <laughs> for you. But as you're coming in and you might, uh, for all of us, when we come into our future self, use your senses, use your five senses here, right? What are your you might see, you might uh, hear, you might feel, sometimes people even smell and taste things, you might just know. So whatever the heck, however it's coming to you, Terry, as she comes into sight and you find your way to the riverbank there and 
she pulls you out and welcomes you and maybe dries you off. <laughs> Anything that you notice about her world is you're coming in for a touchdown there. And anything that you, you know, when we have first impressions with people, we'll have them with our future self too. Any information you get, however you get it, what do you notice as you're coming into her world and towards her? What does she kind of emit? What are your first impressions? Um, I feel, I feel um, everything is still very organic and it's very connected to nature and I can feel the ground underneath me. So it's very grounded and um, I can take a deep breath. It's um, very clear and um, able to refresh easily. Okay, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's refreshing. Excellent. Okay, so just take a moment to really get refreshed being in her environment. And then um, what's she like? Um, grounded and um, knows, um, knows exactly or doing exactly the work she wants to do. Um, in the way it's needed to be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool. Now, if you were to just describe her to someone else, because you are describing her to me, right? What's, what's, the, what's the essence she puts off, right? What's the sense you have about her? Um, what's she wearing? Oh, um, she's just very organic and very bright. Mm -hmm. And, um, She's with the people who she, who, uh, I'm trying to describe this, um, able to share those gifts with the people who need it and in a way that's helping them develop and support themselves. Mm. So not just helping people, but letting them be who they are and find their direction as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. In a very organic way. <laughs> I don't know if I'm being too broad here. <laughs> no, this is great. You're getting what you're getting. So I always just trust it. Right. So it's great yeah. stuff you're getting. So excellent. Okay. I didn't, uh, I was going to give you a heads up on this template and I see I forgot to do it. So we're going to do it in the now. Um, okay. So now we're going to actually, um, she's going to take you somewhere. So she's going to show you around her world and then she's going to nestle in somewhere comfortable. She's playing hostess to you and everybody else the same thing. I would invite going on with your own future self. You can do a parallel journey as you listen in on Terry's too. Um, so where, um, same thing, where is your future self? What does she feel like, uh, he feel like? And then take yourself, where does your future self want to host you, right? To go have a little conversation. What do you notice, Terry? Where, where does your future self lead you as you're going to sit down and have a conversation and dialogue with her? Um, that wherever it is for the people who she's inviting, it's very low pressure and it's very natural and mm -hmm. it is organic. Um, that it's not something that is pre-structured. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's a Great. And wherever she physically le leads you in her world, She's take you somewhere where you can sit down or something, or are you standing up? What to, what works yeah. for you too? We're sitting down, um, relaxed, and everybody's in a circle. A circle, it's equal, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody is um, able to be who they are and share. Um, yeah. Fun. 
So you get to have a little side conversation with her or maybe even get to ask the group at large, right? So here's your opportunity. You're a time traveler from 2021 and you kind of came into here in this um, process group, right? Trying to figure out some things. So I'm bringing you here to talk to the best coach in the world, your future self. <laughs> so what do you want to ask her? Time traveler from 2021. What do you want to ask this one out in 2026 in this circle? Um, how did you know which opportunity to take and was really the opportunity you? <laughs> mm. and, um, does that... Is that the question? Because I feel like that's my question. Well, start, right? start there. That's a good place to, as good as any place to start, I would think. So just see yeah. how she responds to that, right? And future selves communicate in all sorts of ways. Sometimes you'll get direct words. Sometimes you just get a sense, you know, just see as you pose that question to her, see what happens. Any responses, any indications you get back? Um, that <laughs> whatever comes, um, just to try it and see, I guess. Mm -hmm. Just try it. <laughs> good, good, good. Try and see. Good. What else? It's a conversation. Now where do you want to go? Um, hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I think it's that um, we're talking about that I need to share who I am and not be, not maybe afraid, but um, act on it and just do it. Mm -hmm. And that even though I'm trying something else, I can still be um, doing the other things. Yep. Cool. And that even though I'm working in a structure or that I do work in a structure, as long as my surroundings are supportive, that I can still be my independent self and that those things might change and flex, that that's okay. It's just part of growth. Okay. Uh, flex and, uh, sorry, you said flex and grow was it flex and yeah flex and growth like those things might change and flex um but it's part of growth it's part of yes okay good yeah yeah so, if, so if your structure ends up changing on you if my sense is if it's kind of like some of those stable things or secure things um that you might be used to if those move and shift yeah. on you it's okay it's okay that's yeah. growth yeah okay excellent good Okay, we're going to try something a little even weirder. <laughs> so just see, it's always good permission uh, to ask, or it's good manners to ask permission of your future self. There's an opportunity here for you to become her. And this is, goes for everybody listening in. If you're doing parallel processing with your own future selves, ask your future self if it's okay for you to become them. And you're going to like embody them if they have a body or whatever they have. Right, so just, is she okay with you becoming her for a moment? Yes, okay, yeah. then jump on in. Somehow we just know how to do this. So just jump on in and become her, inhabit her body. Okay. See through her eyes, move through her limbs, right? Be in her clothes, be in her environment, be in that role that she's in in that group and just really feel it and notice what's there how it's different from your 2021 self. Get into there and feel what it feels like. Any reports? What's it feel like in there? What do you notice? <laughs> that it's okay. <laughs> and things are moving pretty well and they're moving in the direction that they should. Um, if I'm going to talk about it, like just metaphorically, those tree branches have grown and 
each little thing that sort of happened, that's a leaf. Mm -hmm. And they might fall and sometimes new ones are budding. Excellent. So she's given you this metaphor too. It's okay for those leaves to fall and new ones come up, new growth, new buds. Yeah. Excellent. And I think it's too, it's sort of that the roots are there. Everything has been planted. I've been doing this for years. Everything is planted. It's already there. Mm. I have the system. Um, I have all of the nutrients already in the soil that I'm drawing from. So these branches, they don't need to worry. And the core doesn't need to worry. Everything is there. It's been planted for a while. So if you're not worrying, what are you doing? I'm growing. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just a natural growing. And what's the opposite of um, worry? Um, letting go with flow. Just flowing. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Cool. Let go and flow. Now, she's already giving you and us profound wisdom. Same thing for everybody else. Just jump on in there and see what happens. And you might get some energetic, feel it right down to the cells. And then you're going to jump yourself out, right? And you're taking some of that with you. Once you feel that vibe, it's in you. And um, just see if she has, we're about to wrap this up and you continue to have ongoing connection with her. So just because I'm pulling out of the picture here doesn't mean you can't continue to connect with your future self. But since I'm here taking notes, there's three big bubbles here. And everybody else, you can do this with your future self. See if there's three main messages that your future self wants to get across to you at this point in time. What are the three messages from her to you? The roots are planted and they're there. Good. And. Um, Things are going to go and they're going to flow and it, it's just a process of growth. Gonna go and gonna flow. It's a process of growth. Excellent. Now, see if she has a gift for you. You're going to return to your time. Sometimes they want to gift us things. And this has been a gift in and of itself for you to just connect with her and consciousness back and forth dialogue with her. She's a support and ally for you at all times. See if there's anything she wants to gift you. It might be something intangible. It might be something tangible. Um, oh, she gave me a stone. Hmm. And it's very rounded. It looks like a river rock. Oh, and, cool. Um, it's, uh, it's very stable. And smooth. Yeah. And I think it's the stability. And that it can, it, water's flowed over it just like I flowed in the river through time traveling. Mm -hmm. And um, it's almost made it smoother and it's flowed better. And it's now just the smooth, stable stone. So this book has given me is this rock that's gone through all of the growth, it's traveled and it's this river rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's stable and it's here for you. Beautiful. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And then anything else, you don't have to do it public, but anything you want to say to her private, just go right ahead, knowing you can connect with her in the future too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then when you're ready, she's going to walk you back to the river. And everybody else, whatever's going on for you with your particular self, same thing, any kind of dialogue, last minute things your future self wants to say. When you're ready, returning to whatever brought you forward. In your case, Terry, you're just going to float on back, kind of waving to her as you pull away from the shore saying, I'll be you soon enough. 
Mm -hmm. right? And coming back, there's kind of the reverse time. And so you're coming back for 26 and crossing over into 25 and crossing over to 24, crossing over to 23, pulling all the way back to 22, and then coming in to the landing 21, just at the very tippy end of the year, coming back in your physical body now, when you're ready, opening your eyes and stretching and re-inhabiting this particular body, but still having that energetic, right? That touchstone of hers and maybe even feeling that river rock, right? In your hands, mm -hmm. that stability and that smoothness and that symbol of having gone through growth and it just polishing you and making it smooth and strong. And when you're ready, uh, you'll see there's different notes here. The map is never the territory. The territory is much deeper. We'll have a graph a recording you can listen to again if you care to. And that becomes an ongoing ally, right? Our future selves are wonderful allies. So you might want to jump in the river anytime you want to go have a dialogue with her or even just do a telepathy phone call with her, right? You can connect mm -hmm. with her <laughs> and get the benefit of her consciousness, of her perspective. Anything you want to say about how that was for you? Uh, you got some uh, fabulous information. Um, it was really great. It really it flowed. Um, I think I, I had a hard time with the conversation and I think that's something that I need to process later. I think I just need to kind of visit that on, you know, why was that conversation a little bit, you know, maybe explore it myself and maybe, you know, kind of well, like di dial her up right now and see what she has to yeah. say. Dial her up. What does she say? Like you're, 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 uh, it didn't seem difficult to me, but I totally oh. honor, I totally <laughs> honor that you, plus, you know, you're doing this publicly and stuff. So that's a brave act of courage, Agreed. but yeah, so that could, it could just be that, but just, this is a good opportunity to check, you know, I call it like telepathy text, right? Or telepathy telephone. So just, yeah. you know, say to her, it seemed like that was a little difficult to me. What do you think? What does she say back to you? Don't worry, you're doing fine. <laughs> you're exactly where you need to be. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's what I would say too. You got really, really good information. So the things in red are the big ones, right? That those are the big ones for you to hold on to. The roots are planted, so don't worry, right? You've yeah. done a lot. You got your roots are already planted. You're gonna go and you're gonna flow. That's a yeah. great um, bumper sticker, wow. Yeah. And then um, it's a process of growth. And then, you know, you've got that talisman of the river rock and, uh, you know, just that whole th feelingness of the groundedness and they're organic and bright. So she's just telling you things are moving well. It's growing. Let go and flow, would you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, thanks. No. Thank you. Okay. With all of the maps, I'll do a little fuss fuss with them, a little more coloring and whatever and uh they'll be sent to you individually and then we'll also send it out with the follow-up email that everybody gets so no you'll get them soon enough from pat my assistant and um uh anybody wants to say anything direct to terry you can go ahead and use the the chat uh, messages for her and then i'm also just curious about parallel processing so we've got a couple of minutes left to conclude so I'll just pass around the mic and see uh, what the shares are. Uh, if, if you were able to do any parallel processing with that last one with future self, anything you'd care to share, and then just any closing words to close out. Belinda, may I start with you? I was just gonna re just gonna unmute myself. Terry, thank you so much for sharing um, your 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 vision of yourself. It just helped me to reinforce that a lot of times we already know where we're going. It's just that we have a hard time embracing that. And so it was a reminder for myself and kind of the direction that I'm having to, to walk now and becoming an elder, um, what that is and embracing that. And so thank you all brothers and sisters for sharing your stories. It's always beautiful to, to listen about uh, to, to where we come from when we each as human beings go through the same processes and experiences in life. We just happen to have them in different phases of our life. So thank you so much. Thank you, Christina. Mm, very welcome. Thank you for coming. Sharon, any future self rumblings or anything you want to say to conclude? Oh, let's get you unmuted. 
You're, I can't hear you, hon. We've got to get you unmuted. Yeah. How about now? Yep. Can you hear me now? Um, Terry, I loved witnessing your process. It felt, um, I don't know, you use the word organic a lot, and that, that's what I felt. But there was also a lightness of spirit in you that I really loved. So thank you for that. I did, I did a future self across the veil, and so that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Yes, got some inklings of what that's like and some, yeah. I'm guessing, perspective. Yeah. Perspective. Yeah. yeah, cool. Thanks, Sharon. Nice to see you. Yeah. You too, love. Yeah. Carla, it's a perfect timing whenever anybody comes. So, so you kind of came midstream there. So anything you want to say about the process bit you witnessed and Sure, thank yeah. you. Um, thank you for allowing us on the phone to go on the same journey. And so um, I, I was able to create my own future self. I appreciated your setup in the beginning about whether it was short, medium or long. I chose short and um, just the same buckets you had. I, I already had my paper up for journaling. So mm -hmm. my characteristics were essence and I was wearing sophisticated casual clothes. And, um, you know, I appreciated the questions that you said for us to ask our future self. Um, I'm looking at maybe retiring. I am retiring in the next year. So this was all about where I would be next year at the end of a year of work. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was just really easy for me to go with you every question you asked i i also responded in my own way in my own journal so um Excellent. i'll just share when you said the um what do you see here feel smell i see mask and i wrote mask are cool because i'm tired of fighting the fact that we're going to be wearing masks. <laughs> she made peace with masks okay <laughs> thanks carl thank you Nice to hear there's parallel processing possible. Ross, anything you want to share? Again, uh, it's perfect whenever you dropped in and uh, maybe something happened for you, parallel processing, or anything you want to say to conclude. Um, hello there. Well, um, I, I uh, apologize immediately for my rather, rather late arrival. Um, I've got, got to uh, comment that it's been a really, really in interesting exercise, although I uh, came in um, late. Um, I, I, I would uh, comment that it really took me back to an experience that I, I um, achieved in America when I was studying there. And um, um, I kind of drifted off into an uh, mechanical kind of escape um, traveling into um, space and the future mm. um, um, in in a very contemporary mechanical helicopter uh, which took me back to Lake Pontchartrain uh, because I was um, in a helicopter and and we chased an American eagle um, just across the sky and so um, traveling into the future was just a glorious um, slow loping experience across the sky and um, um, I appreciated the um, opportunity to be participating in this rather rather interesting exercise. Beautiful loping what a great yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it please. Was, um, <laughs> just uh, flap, flap. I could just feel uh, it. Yes. Um, Fabulous. Um, and um, uh, the uh, pilot of the helicopter had uh, returned from the Vietnam War mm -hmm. and um, um, was a uh, private uh, pilot. And it was an unbelievable experience. But that um, kind of... Um, the rather hypnotic way that you um, kind of invited us all to be participating, especially returning at the end, because it was um, sort of very parallel to the kind of return slowly from a hypnotic um, ex experience. Uh, plus, it was really tremendous to see your 
interpretation of this story that was um, unfolding from um, Terry's imagination. Well, sounds like a good couple of minutes spent. Yes, yes it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Perfect timing to drop in. Thank you. Right. Bye if anybody needs to leave. We're right at the hour, but I'm going to keep going. Um, uh, I'll, I'll save you for the end, Terry, because you're still probably being grokked. Um, Denise, I don't know if you want to, with your drive, unmute. You've stuck all the way through, so I'm going to assume you're able to maybe hear something as you're driving across the country. So feel free to unmute if you care to. You'll have to do it on your end. And then uh, if not, let's check. Uh, there you go. Hello? Yeah, hello, hello. Oh. oh, this technology on my phone. We're not always friends. Um, yeah, this has been an on. Uh, uh, the reason I thought I was getting on this call was not the reason it was as it happened, but the uh, three different inquiries were so incredibly um, powerful. Um, the, uh, it seemed to me that each of us have our own personal cosmic question that arises at times. And um, first one was about having your eyesight or not. And I had recently gotten a clarity in my eyesight and got to see someone's trans um, passing in a way I didn't care to, but so the future self was uh, very enlightening as well for all of us personally, I'm sure. Who? <laughs> Um, Any tidbits you got from your future self? Well, my future self um, sort of, we, towards the end, she grabbed both my hands with her hands and looked into my eyes and did this commissioning thing. Mm. What a word. So, and it wow. was an energetic commissioning, which I didn't know there was such a thing mm. till then. Mm -hmm. So... Yes, please. Um, more to be processed, I mm. guess. Well, and kiss the mind, because the mind's trying to figure it out. And good luck, mind. <laughs> Some of these things mm -hmm. I figure out from a left brain cognitive point of view. So just a big yes, please, to energetic commissioning and whatever transpired there. Yes, please. Wow. So, yeah, thank you so much for all that. Thank you, Denise. Amazing, eh? travel across the country and be able to connect in. Love it. Claire, may I go with you next? And feel free, I know you've got funky bandwidth or stuff if you want to just, uh, oh, you already did, Terry. Yeah, love the water and the flow metaphors resonated with the embodiment journey. I've been on to be more flowing. The yin yoga has allowing me to plan and vision in a less structured and organic way quite relaxing and feeling and I felt you as you went through it also felt less stress in my future self yay so you too could tap in and do a parallel journey and feel your future self and what's there eh? the dropping of that tension and stress yes please okay cool to have you along for the journey even though we can't hear you because of tech limits Peggy yes I'm gonna go to you next thank you for flashing on yeah um I I, I love the, oh, the clarity that the future self provided. And I just, um, the word that comes to mind is innocence, but that's not the right word. But there's something quite refreshing about the road being right. No matter what road it is, it's the right road. Mm -hmm. And I, um, yeah, I just thought that was a really beautiful way to end. And I, I also was move by the way the the other two uh, processes kind of linked together and I, I don't know it just feels like um every time i come to a session i'm able to parallel process something from it and i just really appreciate the ability to sit here and be part of something without 
without knowing why or how, but just ex accepting that that's what's going on. And also love the flowing of the river right now. It just feels like a very flowing time with snow flowing down from the sky, which doesn't usually happen here. Beautiful. Thank yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. It's good to see you. Terry, I'm going to give you the final word on the checkout. Um, it was just such a, like, I think it was a great experience just to witness you um, hold the container and to, so you're going back, I don't know if you know who Paulo Kilm is, but to see him, so you're, you're taking the role of that change maker and you're guiding that process, that hypnotic process, but you're not just doing it alone, you're handing it over. So you handed that over to me with these questions um, to help it become that of the participant and their individual and their story. So I think it was just really a great example of um, letting them become the change maker after yourself and handing off that role. And it, it, was, it was really amazing and a great flow. I, I loved it. Great <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to process professional cognitive mind checking it all out. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'm going to do a quick share. I'll do my little commercial here at the end. Uh, there's a couple things coming up. So this time of year, I get set for what's happening next season. So I figured out um, most of the courses that I'm going to offer. Um, this will continue. You're, you've just attended the uh, process pop up. Um, that's going to continue into 2022. I offer them every couple of weeks. Uh, you're obviously on the subset list for that offering. And so you'll continue to be notified. And it's come as you like, right? It's a drop in. So um, when it suits you like it did today, you're welcome at any time to come and it reconfigurates each time, even if it's the same people, there's different people and different things that were, you know, arising within us. So those are going to continue the free process pop ups. Um, also, the I have um, one to ones that I do as well, if you're okay with being recorded, and you can find that this is all on the courses page of my website, hopefully you're able to see. Um, so if you do want a, a private one, to, a public one-to-one -one in a way, because it's recorded and shared, just like this uh, current one that we're doing is. I right now, um, I have a private version of what we just did um, that happens over 16 weeks with the same group of people. I'm in, in the middle of one right now. It's called the Visual Satsang. Uh, so the current one is sold out. Uh, it goes till February 19th. After that, I'll run another one. I tend to do them on Saturday mornings my time. Um, and I may offer them at other times as well, depending on need. There is, as I mentioned earlier today, there is a Shift It online retreat. I have a whole whack of tools. Um, one of the tools I have is a complete process called the Shift It Visual Coaching Process. And it's a great process to do multiple times at our during our lives. Um, uh, I'm running it January 21 through 23. It's in intensive format. I offer it in different ways. This year, I'm going to continue what I did last year, running it over three days. And we do three Zoom webinars a day. And it's uh, really best if you can as much as possible book off those three days and really do a retreat because you'll be working with the full map pack of my shifted tools. And so we'll be in huddles together and then you'll go out and work on your own in your own environment and you'll come back into the Zoom huddle and we'll go back and forth like that through, th through three days. Beautiful uh, experience, just like today, people from all over come. And if you are interested in using my tools yourself in my own practice, that's one of the prerequisites is to go through Shift It yourself. There's also a home study kit if those dates don't particularly work for you. I have a new course, brand new course coming up because I've been shifting myself into cryptocurrencies and uh, uh, I found myself a coach. And so I'm bringing her in. Uh, Chanel, Chanel Monk is coming in and, and offering a Shift Into Cryptos course. So if you're and a new like I am to cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is the course for you that explains the whole terrain of the blockchain. And we'll both share what we're particularly doing. We're not advising you in terms of your um, crypto purchases, but uh, we'll share what we're doing and we'll point you to different things 
that we have found helpful, et cetera. Um, Chanel comes from a uh, multiple backgrounds, a uh, background in the um, stock exchange here in Canada, and also um, a very spiritual person with being a professor in uh, religious studies, <laughs> which is a good combination for me with the left brain and the right brain. Uh, so this is a brand new course and going well. I don't have the sign up page completely done. That's my assignment as I'm here on holiday. Uh, but over the last next couple of days, I'll have that wrapped up and it'll be live on the site. For now, we just have a little coming soon page, but you can see the dates there. It's on Thursdays, um, noon to 1.30 my time, and it runs for 10 sessions. It's all recorded as well. And uh, if money and financial stuff... Uh, causes emotional uh, stuff going on inside of you, the Deluxe has some processing sessions connected, uh, group processing sessions with that. And then um, Visual Coach Certification, which is my flagship uh, program. I offer it twice a year. I'm wrapping up one cohort right now. A new cohort is forming. And so the spring cohort is going to restart April 5th. Two prerequisites, sh going through shift it yourself. And then the other prerequisite is that you have something that enables you to work visually already, which would be my fundamentals of working visually program, or maybe you've been trained by somebody else as the visual field continues to grow. Uh, so with those two prerequisites, plus ideally some sort of experience already with working with individuals. Uh, you can read about that on the site. There's an application process where we come in and have a huddle and see if you're a good fit for the cohort. And if so, you'll continue along with us. Uh, Peggy and Sharon on currently on this group and Claire are, are all um, certified visual coaches with me. And uh, oh yes, and I have Rhoda Draws, my colleague who's down in Mexico, we run uh, in person retreats, fabulous retreats in San Miguel Allende in Mexico. Unfortunately, not able to do that at the moment, uh, but we do run online programs. And so we're having a fast and loose sketch club starting in April, April through to the beginning of July on Wednesday mornings. Um, Road is a hoot. If you've been through a fast and loose with us before, uh, repeaters are welcome. There's a, a reduced fee for repeaters. I should also say, in my um, shifted online, if you've been through that once, um, free repeater from there on in. So just a reminder for those of you who have been through shifted, you're welcome to come as a free repeater uh, if you want another round. Those of you who are new to it, just understanding that's a benefit of the program, right? Once you've purchased and been through it, you can come as many times as you like in the future. Okay, there you go. You can see what's coming. I may add a fundamentals. I'm kind of up in the air about what to do with my fundamentals course, but those are the ones I know for sure that I'm running this season. Uh, the fundamentals is available by home study kit, and I actually have eight home study kits um, from the full range of my courses that are available. You can find that on the site under uh, online kits. Yeah, and they're on 50, everything's 50% 50 off on those kits right now with the pandemic. Okay, I'm uh, happy to stick around for any bonus time if there's any questions or comments, um, but we'll just officially give it a wrap. Thanks everybody for coming and going a little overtime, yay. And I just figure out this, the schedule. I take a look at my calendar and figure out when I'm gonna offer the next one. So when the notes come out from this one, you'll see the date of what I've decided on the next one, you'll be notified, yeah. Take good care and all the best as we shift into 2022. Bye. Bye. Just seeing Claire's note there, the in the moment visual record is very powerful and reflecting on how I could use it with embodied coaching without everything getting too busy. I think there's a map in there. Yeah, I've been farting around with maps too for the inquiry. Very, very simple grids. Because uh, everything's so spontaneous, it's I'm a little reluctant to stick it into a template, but uh, it might be coming too. Yeah, great. Any uh, further questions, comments? Happy New Year, Christina. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You too.
Bye. Mm -hmm. Happy swimming. <laughs> <laughs> I'll figure out how to get the book from you, Peggy. Bye, Claire. Happy New Year. Oh, cool, Carla. Yeah, we'll see you in the certification. Yeah, <laughs> you're on the list as long as you want to be. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy you too. Hi there. Um, hi. Hi. Um, a question. Um, could you actually send me some information um, regarding the fundamental kit? Uh, sure. I'm, uh, I'm a um, long-term cartoonist, but I'm, I've been um, recently delving into corporate um, uh, communication with... Um, Graphic recording, board. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and um, um, I guess it seems to me that a, um, uh, perhaps an opportunity to be delving into the beginning and it's probably the fundamental kit. It, that be it'd be a good true? one for you yeah because it'll give you the lay of the land about this field yeah. right obviously as a cartoonist you're not going to need the components or modules in there about the drawing basics you've already got that but everything yeah. everything else will be of interest to you ross because it'll give you the i call them the four animals there's four different ways that you can apply the skills you've just witnessed one right with yep. the visual coaching stuff and as you've probably already encountered um, studio work so you're going to be dynamite with that um, uh, where you're creating you know really polished pieces for those communication departments then there's uh, graphic recording that can be done in person and in the online environment more spontaneous as you saw me today taking spontaneous notes right but that being more in a corporate kind of business setting than what we were doing today and then the the other animals facilitation so if you um you you mentioned visioning so i would point you to the grove consultants you'll you'll find out if you don't already know about them you'll find out in my fundamentals kit about them i i came out of working for them uh, in san francisco and yeah. they have a really wonderful process called the strategic visioning process that has a bunch of tools whether you're doing it in person or you're doing digital um, that will really help you do visioning in a visual way again either in person or online so their their stuff is really great oh, uh, wow. yeah so you really don't have to reinvent the wheel you can just jump in with the tools you have and uh understand you know this particular niche application of, of things yeah uh, you can put your if you care to just put your email in the um in the chat here yep. and i'll just write it down and i'll uh, have my assistant send you the information on that kit okay yeah. all right tremendous and um appreciate the invite and and the opportunity and i apologize again for for my late arrival oh you don't have to apologize <laughs> yeah it's all okay in fact carla came in at the exact same time so i was like oh here's oh. a couple of people <laughs> let oh, them in yeah, yeah <laughs> so it's totally cool yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Well, uh, appreciate that, and um, um, have a great new year. Um, Thanks. I, um, a, a comment. I I was um, um, intending to come across and attend um, your courses in two thousand and twenty, but uh, COVID. Um, oh um, yes. In, he interrupted um, all all of the international travel, yep. of course. So yes, too bad you didn't yep. make it beforehand. Yeah, I yeah. I so miss it. I mean, I was already working online, and I had a really nice balance with online and in person. I'm grateful for the uh, yeah. being able to still connect with people online, but it's really fabulous to do in person. So hopefully that will be back in the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, and um, um, am I? correct that you are located in Canada, are you? 
I am. I'm in yeah. um, British Columbia. I'm just up from Seattle in the States. So in a oh. place called Victoria. Oh. I'm on an island, uh, 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 Vancouver, right? Um, Vancouver is the biggest city next to me, but I'm on a big island that's off yeah. of Vancouver. So you have to take a little ferry to get here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Marvelous. Good. Yes. Um, and you, you're in Australia. So boy, you've been through some interesting things depending on where you live in Australia. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but I, uh, um, I studied at the University of Pennsylvania and oh. I've been uh, um, really, really conscious of the awful time that um, America has been th through with COVID. It's um, um, unbelievable, but um, yes, well, it's the way it is at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, interesting enough, COVID didn't come up too much today, but, yeah, uh, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's certainly been present all the way through. This is how this process pop up got started as COVID just was waking, making its way to North America back in March, 2020. So, yeah. and now it's been 40 of these. So I thought it was going to just be a one is offering. Right? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Number yeah. 40, really? Yeah. Four oh, zero. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and has um, COVID been as um, impactful in Canada as in America? Yes, I mean, I guess it would depend on how you defined impactful. Uh, it's been impactful in many ways, um, uh, definitely in terms of uh, health and is and just the restrictions. We have probably like what's going on as I hear in Australia, right? We're kind of number two, I think, in the world in terms of the restrictions that have been imposed upon us. So yes, number two yeah. or number three, along with the UK. So that's definitely impacted uh, yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, and continues to. We'll see what happens as there's a lot of uh, increasing intensity building about Omicron here. So we'll see if we're going into yeah. some more heavy duty lockdowns. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay, well. <laughs> um, they, it's not boring they, times yeah no 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 exactly no. Yeah. okay well um, um Drop your, they, do you know how to use the chat function um uh it's here yeah so if oh. you click on chat right. and yep. then you just type in type no nobody else will see this but me but yeah, if yeah. you type type in your email yep. um then i'll i'll have pat send you the information on that fundamentals kit okay. I just don't know which Ross you are, so I don't know what e your email is to send it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, um, I have have se um, several um, email addresses. Mm. That's it. Okay. Awesome. Um, I could be um, possibly registered as um, uh, this one. That's good. I got this one. So we'll send it to you there, even if you're okay. on my list on some I'm other one. It. You'll at least get... Yeah. You know the info from Pat from via this okay. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice me. to nice to meet you. Yes. <laughs> At least this Bye. way, not in person, Bye. but yeah. <laughs> Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. All the best. You too.